Welcome to a Kaitor Industries tutorial. This is part three of my four part series on creating the Ultimate AV Famicom, the Japanese equivalent to the top loading NES. In this video, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes, installing the NES RGB from Tim Worthington onto the AV Famicom to give us nice, crispy RGB video output from the multi out connection here. We're also going to be using the Voltar QSB or Quick Solder Board which is a kit that replaces using conventional ribbons or cables to give us a quicker, cleaner installation. The first thing we're going to need to do is remove the picture processing unit, or PPU. So let's flip the board over and get started. Let's go ahead and zoom in so we can get a closer look. Now our PPU is these two rows of pins right here. And we're going to be desoldering this using a desoldering station, but before we do, I'm going to add some fresh solder so it's a little bit easier to work with. So we'll just take a little bit of flux. So no clean here. Just make it a little easier to work with and uh, grab our soldering iron, some fresh solder. Okay, now that we've applied fresh solder to all of these contacts, let's grab our desoldering station, which I've just cleaned out, so we should have nice good suction. And uh, spend just a, just a second on each one of these pins. Usually count to three or four. See if we can get some better light in here. Great work on that first row of pins. That's looking pretty good. Let's tackle the second. We just had something a little unusual happen. Normally you have to spend a little bit of time with a set of tweezers making sure each pin is free, but it actually looks like, in our case here, the PPU has literally 
fallen out the bottom. I, I've never had that happen before. That means we've had great solder removal, um, fantastic suction. So let's flip this over and let's see. We, we want to do like a quick little just finger test. Let's see if this is loose. Look at that. Wow. I could have breathed on that and taken that off. That is incredible. Um, you don't want to fight this. You don't want to fight the PPU. You can damage the pins. You can damage the board. If you have pins that are stuck, again, grab your tweezers, get on the pin on the back side, give it a little wiggle. If it's stuck to the via, you can apply new solder. You can use your desoldering station to pull it out, or you can just use a soldering iron and try to break it free with some heat. But don't fight it, don't tug it. You can damage the board, you can damage the PPU. Uh, but what we just experienced right here, that's a rarity. I love to see that, it just came right out. That was beautiful. So there we go, PPU is removed. Let's clean the back side of this board off a little bit. Apply just a little bit of alcohol. Just clean this up. There we go, looking better. With our PPU removed, the next step is to install the riser or the board adapter. And to do that, we're first going to grab one of our, uh, our IC sockets here. Now you'll notice it has this little notch on the one side only. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to align that with the notch on the silk screen on the board. So pretty simple, drop that in. Now, one step I didn't mention in this video is uh, capacitor C5, which we covered in part one. If you're not doing a recap, you'll actually have to desolder that capacitor and bend that over because otherwise uh, you'll have an interference issue where this capacitor will butt up against the adapter. So just a little note there. Now with the socket in place, we're going to want to grab some of our pin strips. Now there's two different sets of pin strips. There's this set here, which is round. And then there's the other set, which are square, if you can make that out. Uh, now we want to start with the round. The square is going to come later. So let's just drop our round pin strips in. It doesn't have to be pressed on all the way just yet. Just loosely slip them in there. Um, and then we have our adapter board. Now you'll notice on the adapter board, the silk screen um, also has the notches. Um, it also will say motherboard and NES RGB. Now, if you have uh, strong powers of deduction, you've probably determined the motherboard side. That's right, it goes to the motherboard. So let's get that lined up. Sitting in the pins, everything's lined up. We can go ahead and we can press that down in. It's a nice satisfying click as that locks into place. Now with this level, what we want to do is use a finger to hold it in place while we just tap a couple of these pins in place so it doesn't move. There we go. and we'll go ahead and solder the rest of these.
just like that. So now we can flip it over. You can see the pen's poking through where the PPU once was. Now we'll need to hold the back side with our finger in order to keep it flush. You want to push down, not too hard, but just enough where it, it sits. Um, now this can get a little tricky because you could really use a third hand here. But we'll just tack it in place on a couple of these pins, that way it stops moving, just to make our life a little easier. sitting nice and flush. So let's go ahead and solder the rest of these pens. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna use some of my isopropyl alcohol and clean off this flux. And as you can see, we have some really nice solder joints. That's exactly what we want to see. No shorts, nice and shiny, no cold solder joints. Great. We can remove the adapter. This just snaps right out. Don't use too much force, but it should just pull right out if you give it a little bit of convincing. There we go. See? These pins just pull right out. Let's put our EV Famicom mainboard aside for a second and grab our NES RGB looking at the back side here. Finally, we're going to use our uh, square pinstripes. 
And these are going to go right into where you see the white silkscreen indicators. So just drop that in like that. Now we just need to solder these in place. So what I like to do is take our adapter board and just do a loose fit. We're not soldering this in yet. We're just putting this in loosely. We can't solder this in yet, actually, because we still need to do the socket. But that way, they're held, they're aligned. Uh, that's what we want to see. So let's do that. We're going to solder this front row first, um, and then we're going to come back around to this guy. Whoops, looks like we got a little bit of solder on the back end here. I'm going to turn the desoldering station back on. We're going to take that out. While we're waiting for that to heat up, what I'm going to do on the other row of pins here is just clip them down slightly because you can see how they're, they're sticking up here. So if we just take a little bit off the top, solder that in. proceed. little mistakes are being stubborn. So what I need to do is unfortunately add just a little bit of solder to get what's there out. Mistake has been corrected. So at this point, we can take the adapter back off, put that aside, and finally we can install our last uh, IC socket. Now, once again, you'll notice the silk screen has a notch on this side. We are going to align that with the notch on the socket. So drop that in. And if you look, you'll notice how where we clipped it back, there is plenty of clearance now. So now we don't have to worry about any interference because what can happen is this could end up sitting up like that. Uh, you, you don't want that. You want this sitting flush down with the board. You don't want any pins uh, intersecting or um, interfering rather against this IC socket. So we're good there. Everything looks as it should. Uh, so let's flip this around, solder it in place.
perform a quick inspection of the work. Make sure none of the pins are shorted. Make sure we don't have any cold solder joints. Everything looks really good. I do want to touch this up just a little bit. Good. Let's clean this with a little bit of isopropyl. This is an important pause point where we have to stop and really inspect our work carefully because getting back in here after we install the adapter board is a complete headache. So we want to make sure all of our solder joints look good and they do. So we are really ready to proceed here. And the next step is hooking up our NES RGB to the adapter board. Uh, so the adapter board sits like this, and uh, the NES RGB aligns right on there. You can see on the silk screen pattern, the notch aligns with the socket here. Uh, so that just sits like this. There we go. And go ahead and solder that together. Very good, our adapter is installed. We can take a quick look at our work.
All right. So now we have the socket installed on the AV Famicom, the socket installed on the NES RGB, the adapter installed to the NES RGB. At this point, we're ready for mounting. Very simple. You just pop it in place. There we go. Now let's grab our PPU. Again, make sure it is aligned with the notch. Make sure all of the pins are aligned. If you have any bent pins, you're going to have a bad day. So just double check, make sure everything looks good. There we go. That's it. This next step is completely optional and is only required if you're looking for a 100% guaranteed gel bar free video output. So this is brought to us from Voltar, who determined through some research that if we uh, separate the grounds from the multi out uh, and only of course wire those back to the NES RGB, uh, we can get rid of the gel bars. So what we're gonna need to do here is take off the uh, uh, the panel uh, for the shell and the AV multi out. So let's flip it around. First, remove these two screws. Now, pulling off this panel can be a bit of a challenge. We're going to make this a little bit easier uh, by adding some fresh solder to the DC jet connections and uh, try to get these pads flowing um, with our iron. And we should be able to pull off this panel with relative ease. Let's give this a shot. There we go. It has broken free. And now we can set this aside and come back to this later. We now have to remove the multi out by applying some fresh solder to these pins and then using our desoldering station to remove the multi out. I'm just checking to make sure each one of these pins is loose and free. We don't want to have to put any unnecessary stress on the connector or the board. And there we go. So we should be able to flip this around. And if all is well, this should come right off. Look at that. Beautiful. With our multi-out connector removed, what we need to do is drill the two ground vias, not all the way through, but just enough so that uh, our pins are no longer going to be making contact with the ground and the board. So this is going to be a little tricky to show on camera, but I'll do what I can. I 
I had to finish that off camera. It's a little bit difficult to pull off when I don't really have good sight. So now that we got the top side, we're going to flip it around. We're going to do the same thing on the back. So that is right here. Final step here, we're going to use our multimeter and set it to a uh, continuity check, and we're just going to see if uh, these are in fact isolated now from ground, which they should be. Good. Of course, make sure it's working. And let's check the top end. Perfect. We have successfully isolated our ground. We can now reinstall our multi-out connection. Now when we do this, make sure we don't add any solder to the ground pins because those are isolated and you could accidentally catch a little piece of that uh, that ground sticking out. So uh, we're going to connect every other pin but the grounds. isopropyl alcohol and wipe this down. At this point, we're ready to reinstall our EV output panel. I'm going to use my desoldering station to remove some of this old solder just to make this process go a little bit smoother.
Now when reinstalling screws in plastic, there's a clever little technique that you need to remember. Uh, don't just start screwing it in. You actually want to lightly apply very little pressure and turn counterclockwise until you feel or hear a click. There it is. At that point, go ahead and tighten it down. What this does is it makes sure that you're reusing the existing threads uh, because otherwise you can cut new threads uh, which can easily strip out this old plastic. We'll do the same thing on this side. Doesn't need to be over tightened. And now we can solder our DC connections to the main board. We're now at the step in the process where we can install the QSB, the quick solder board. So you just mount that right on top like that. we are. Let's install the other side of the QSB. This is a good opportunity for us to pause and talk about jumpers. So there's a few that we need to hit. One is J5. We need to short that for NTSC. 
uh, J8 we need to leave open. That's right here. Uh, that's for TTL sync. As long as we leave that open, we can use a standard SNES multi-out cable. Uh, we also need to short J3, which is to use 5 volt from the PPU to power the NES RGB. J7 up here, that's going to stay open. Open is for NTSC. And there's also a jumper on the Voltar QSB right here for O, audio out. We're actually going to leave that open. Um, you would leave that open on any case using the AV Famicom, uh, but this is actually doubly important for us because we're going to be using uh, our audio restoration mod. So let's short out J5 and J3. Next, we need to connect our audio. Our audio input will go to B and A. Now you can see here on Voltar's QSB board, he has some traces that go to the NES RGB and land on these pads for easy soldering. Uh, these don't go to the ribbon connector, which is good. That's exactly what we want because we're going to be pulling those from CPU pin one and two, as we discussed uh, in the prior video on the audio restoration mod. Uh, audio output we are going to be using, but we don't want to short this jumper. Uh, we're going to tie in right here, uh, and then I'll show you where to land that on the cartridge connector. So we'll use uh, a little bit of ribbon cable, uh, this here, and we're going to pull off two conductors to an approximate length for our A and B. We'll strip these down. Give them a little bit of no clean flux. We do have a little bit of extra length here, so I'm going to trim these down. Great. There is a small break in the shield down here, so we're going to run our wire there, pretend we have our shield in place, just to approximate the length that we need. Uh, now I wired it where brown is A, or pin 1, and uh, the red is going to B, pin 2. So there we go, we have the length we need. Let's cut that down the length. And we will separate and strip.
Let's trim these back just a little bit. Here we go. That's all set. Now remember, if you're not doing the audio balance restoration mod, you don't need to do this step. Finally, one last thing we need to connect. Audio out. For this, we're going to use shielded cable. Now I have two conductors shielded. Uh, I'm just going to use only one of the conductors. Uh, you do really only need single conductor shielded for this. I strip back some of the jacket. Now, because uh, we're using a shielded cable, I am going to ground it, but I'm only going to ground it on the other side. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and snip the ground right off on this side. It doesn't really matter which wire you use, uh, but I'm going to use the white wire. We are going to connect this onto pin O. There we go. Uh, do perform a close inspection. Make sure that this ground shielding isn't touching anything because uh, that can cause problems if it is. we're going to do is we're going to feed this back through under the NES RGB. Uh, because there is another break in the shield right over here by the QSB. So we're going to use that break in the shield to fish that back down. And as explained in the previous video, we're going to be connecting this to the cartridge pin slots. So let's cut this down. It's a little bit more than we need, but that's okay. We can always trim it back. Let's remove the jacketing. So remember we use the white wire, so we can go ahead and cut that red wire right off. And for the ground, what I'm going to do is take all these ground strands and turn them to one ground connector here. I'm leaving these intentionally long 
because I'm going to cut them down as we get uh, ready to solder it to the board. Apply some flux. Now we have to land our wires right in here. The audio output is going to go there and the ground is going to go right here. So I'm going to trim those down to the length that I need. I'm keeping the ground as short as I absolutely can because a long ground uh, could mean a short somewhere. There we are. With our audio connections out of the way, and once again, those audio connections are only required if you're doing the audio restoration mod, uh, we can now connect our ribbon cable. So this is pretty simple. Just fish it through underneath the board. Insert and tighten. That's it. You do the same thing on this side. We need to cut this trace right here because this is our old video in sync. So let's Get rid of that. Our QSB ribbon is installed, so we can now reinstall the uh, heat sink and shield. So what we're going to do is we're going to take just a tiny dab of MX4 Arctic Thermal Compound and put that on the back of the voltage regulator. That may have even been too much, but that's okay. And now take our heat shield, put that in place. A minor detail, but off camera, I uh, did move the QSB. Originally, I had them up on these vias. It's actually a little bit better to mount them on the pad. It's uh, a lot easier to connect. Uh, I just wasn't thinking very clearly. Um, and then one other detail. 
short out ground in three, so we have a default pallet. And now we can go ahead and test it. Awesome. And there we go. After a successful test, we know that we've finished the NES RGB installation and the Voltar QSB quick solder board. Everything looks and works fantastic. I'm very happy with the result. And we're ready to move on to part four. I hope you join me. Thanks for watching.